Okay, hope you enjoyed that one. That was hiking Frenchman's Cap in Tasmania. It's actually the first time I have ever set foot in Tassie, and what better way to do it than do a three-day hike in one of the most awesome national parks I have ever been in. So I'm currently chilling out in this uh, random hotel that I quickly Googled for the cheapest uh, accommodation in Hobart, and this is what it came up with, so. Hence the uh, random backdrop, but I digress. A little bit more about the hike itself and logistics. What I did was I ended up jumping on a plane from Perth to Hobart on the 16th of November. Flew in and arrived at about 5.30 in the afternoon. Jumped in a hire car and then drove for three hours until I got to the trailhead of Frenchman's Cap. So I ended up getting around there at about 9, 9.30ish in the afternoon or at night time. And uh, yeah, ended up crashing in my car for that night. Had an absolute shocking sleep as it was raining most of the night and it was really quite cramped in there. But Nevertheless, I uh, got up at first light and started making way on the trail. Now this trail in particular uh, was definitely up there in terms of my uh, challenging scale. Um, it definitely pushed my limits both mentally and physically. There was some certain sections there that were just absolutely relentless when you're going up there. Um, just couldn't seem to catch a break but there was also a couple hiccups. The first one being is that my main camera, the one that I'm shooting on right now, uh, the actual screen buggered up. So I'll just give you a little overview of what happened there. 
So just walking back to me camera to pick her up and I noticed something that gave me a little bit of a fright. Not sure if you can see that, but the screen has gone absolutely bonkers. Fortunately, that little bad boy there, the viewfinder, still works. So I can press on and keep going with the filming. Uh, it is going to be a little bit annoying because I can't really use the screen, but nevertheless, it still works and I'll have to get that sorted out when I get back home. But uh, yeah, check out these views. And pretty much about an hour, hour and a half after that, um, that screen went completely blank and also the viewfinder went absolutely blank as well. So I was left flying blind and basically carrying around this really heavy camera almost seemingly for no reason. I decided to whack out the old iPhone and I luckily remembered that the Peak Design travel tripod had this nifty little contraption inside of it where you can clip your iPhone into it. And that is where I started recording the videos through my iPhone. So you probably realized, or you may have realized, that uh, around that midsection, the last shot when I was uh, filling up my water bottle from that small cascading waterfall, that is when the camera buggered up and that is when I had to resort to using my iPhone to record the video. Uh, I thought it was going all smooth sailing and that's when I realized I had actually dropped my phone. And so I spent the next half an hour, 45 minutes, backtracking to find my phone and that is when this moment happened. Oh my god. See this spot right here? Right there. I just spent the last 45 minutes searching for my phone, absolutely shitting myself. Um, oh, I'm so glad I found that then. My main camera is buggered. No longer can see what's going on at all. Pretty much only got my phone in terms of navigation, um, which isn't all that bad as it's pretty easy to work out the trail, but more so getting back to the airport probably would have been a bit of an issue and I would have oh, had to ask someone for directions or try to follow someone all, back, all the way back there. Oh my God, I am so relieved. Oh, I was just about to walk back to Vera Hut uh, and contemplate calling it quits early, but oh, I'm gonna power on now up to Tahoon Hut and put this phone in my zipper pocket. Oh my god, my heart is pumping a million beats an hour. Lesson learned on that one, I think. So, I was obviously very relieved to find my phone and I don't know whether I was just in complete panic stations, but I was really, really close to pulling the trigger and walking back to Vera Hut and really contemplate uh, going back home early or at least finishing the hike early. I didn't really have any navigation means in terms of getting back to the airport which I don't think would have been too hard, but it's more so just the fact that I literally have everything on my phone. And um, I think this is almost my call to, to actually back up my phone because I have so much information and so much personal stuff saved on there. Um, if I did lose it, I would be quite lost. But nevertheless, I ended up pressing on and I hiked to Tahoon Hut and Oh my God, this hut was absolutely amazing. I have never seen such a hut like this before on any trail and oh, I was just blown away with how immaculate it was. So as soon as you walk through those set of doors, it's almost like a wave of just nice warmth just comes and hits you in the face. Um, it is so, so refreshing and so nice. So I was quite fortunate in that I only had another two blokes staying with me that night. I had been told in the past before all the uh, COVID stuff kicked in that it did get quite popular. And yeah, you almost had to uh, 
count your lucky stars whether you could get some space in there or not. There is a few campgrounds there, but they were uh, there's only about three of them around. So yeah, you really had to be quite lucky if you wanted to get into the hut. But yeah, ended up starting the hike around seven o'clock and it took me about uh, two hours, two and a half hours to get to the summit. And the views up there were absolutely breathtaking. One thing that you might have picked up in the video though was that it was absolutely freezing up the top there. I was still a little bit warm from the ascent up there at the start. So that's where I got that shot uh, without all the extra clothing and gloves and beanie and whatnot on. But after that, once I'd been sitting still for about a minute or two, the cold kicked in so, so quickly. And you can see that someone's kind of made that concave wind barrier there. And I really made use of that and just sat there shielding myself from the wind, had a quick snack and uh, soaked it up for a little bit longer before deciding to make the descent. Now, I just want to say that although this trail is an out and back hike, it did not matter at all to me. The views are just so amazing the whole duration of this hike. Even when you're just walking through the lush green rainforest and even right down towards the bottom, um, there is something to look at the whole time. And it's really quite good because you get to see it from a different perspective coming back. So yeah, on the descent, I wanted to make my way down to Vera Hut. This was a much easier day on the legs albeit my knees were taking an absolute hammering. You probably noticed as well that I actually brought along a trekking pole. Now, I did this, of course, on purpose because I had read some pretty gnarly reviews about this hike, and I thought if I was ever gonna invest in a hiking pole, this would be the trip to do so, and I'm so glad I did because I'm not too sure whether my knees would have survived the constant jarring of the steps as I was going down. So yeah, really, really grateful for bringing that hiking pole. But yeah, ended up rocking into Vera campsite slash hut area at around five o'clock-ish in the afternoon. And I was absolutely set on setting my tent up on one of those awesome kind of campsite wooden platform areas that they provide. The hut did have a few people in there. I think there was about three or four when I looked through the window, but I was personally never going to sleep in there. It didn't really have uh, any heating or anything, and it was dated back to the 70s or 80s for when it was built. So it was a little bit outdated, and I really wanted to uh, go in my tent for that night, partly because I had carried it the whole way. So um, I was... Uh, a little bit forceful on myself, just really wanted to actually get some use out of bringing the tent all the way on the flight and car and hike. The next day, the third day, was just a short hike back to the trailhead. Ended up doing it pretty much in four hours flat. I only did very minimal filming as I did so much filming on the first time and uh, really just wanted to get back to the car. And yeah, just get uh, rested up and find a hotel room to shower and get a little bit clean. For those that are unaware, Western Australia announced its uh, open border policy on the 14th of November. And I was pretty quick to book flights to Tasmania on the 16th. Hence, I was able to get out and do this. But in saying that, it's a risk that I was willing to take and one I think paid off really, really well. So I hope you enjoyed this one, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.